Hello friends, Sean from Draft Therapy back at it again, and on today's review for you, it's not catnip, but it's the next best thing, psychedelic cat grass. Psychedelic Cat Grass is a 7.1% IPA from Shorts Brewing Company in Bel Air, Michigan. So if you follow the channel, you probably know that I like to try and hunt down rare Michigan beers. I just enjoy the challenge of it. In the case of Psychedelic Cat Grass, I wasn't even looking for this. I kind of thought, oh, okay, another Shorts IPA. I'll go hunting for it in three weeks. I'll see it all over the place. Because Shorts doesn't seem like they like to do very many limited releases. I wasn't even looking for this beer, and while doing my beer store rounds, one shop owner asked if I was interested in picking it up. He said it was just brewed the, the day before, actually, and one of his other customers decided not to pick up theirs, so I told him to go ahead and add it to my cart. Now, this is my first review of a Shorts beer since they sold a 20% stake to Lagunitas in late July. Again, if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you probably also know that I'm not really fond of the idea of big breweries coming in and buying these guys out, especially when not too long ago, Shorts had the slogan, Michigan only, Michigan forever. But business is business, and with that being said, I'm going to be as objective as possible when reviewing their beers. So this is a triple dry hopped American IPA, and Shorts wants you to drink it as fresh as possible. It's been about three days since this was bottled, so let's not delay it any further and get on with the show. One thing I wanted to mention was the logo, the well, the label here, Psychedelic Cat Grass, just has all these crazy, like, four-eyed cats and all types of other stuff hidden in the grass here. And I really think it's cool that they're kind of paying homage or, you know, whatever to uh, Louis Wayne, who, if you've ever seen it, I'll, I'll put a picture up here in the corner real quick because I don't want to get caught for copyright. Um, and a link down below to his whole story. He's the guy that kind of, uh, they think, developed like schizophrenia and, uh, you know, started jarring these cats all crazy. So I got my Herpy Derpy bottle opener here. Let me reach over here and grab my IPA glass. We'll crack this open and get it started. Again, another shorts, short uh, little bottle cap there. Set that to the side, set this to the side. As soon as I crack that, I could start smelling these hops. So this has a really good smell. Kind of smells some, definitely smell the dankness. Um, somebody on a comment earlier said, uh, commented on the dankness. But yeah, it smells kind of fruity. I get a little pineapple, maybe a little bit of guava in there. Just, you know, stick my nose right in there, but let's pour this. See if we can get a better smell. Whoa. Getting a nice soapy looking kind of head there. It's uh, as it gets concentrated, it gets this more kind of orangish, golden orange kind of color. Lots of head here. I did, I don't think I poured that too aggressively, but nice thick head, nice soapy bubbles on there, foamy. Nice and nice and kind of billowy there. Okay, again, I smell kind of piney hops. Uh, a little bit of pineapple, a little fruit, a little citrus in there. Maybe a little bit of a guava. It smells good. It smells nice and hoppy, nice and piney on the back end. Not kind of a faint piney hoppiness to it. Let's give it a taste. Okay, now up front, super, super piney. Kind of subsides. No, it, okay, it's got, still has a pretty piney aftertaste to it. Let's move that around the mouth a little bit. So I'm getting a really strong piney taste up front. As that subsides a little bit, I start to get kind of some of the citrus, some of the grapefruit, um, a little orange, and then that just kind of gets overwhelmed again by the pininess. Yeah, pininess, kind of a grapefruity bitterness, some citrus bitterness, and then again, back on with the 
with the zesty pininess. Pininess is the thing for me that I wasn't really a big fan of with IPAs a couple years ago when I kind of stopped drinking them. Now that I've kind of had more of the New England, the sweeter ones, I've kind of got a newfound appreciation for it. So... For me to pick up on that fruitiness that's that's in there, but it's deep in there, I have to kind of roll it around in my mouth a little bit. I'm not getting it. If I just take a swig of this real quick, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of that sweetness. I'll take a quick swig and I'll let you know. Okay, no, I do get a little bit of the sweet citrusy taste. Grapefruit, not as much. Um, that's where more of the orangey kind of taste comes in, like a sweeter orangey taste. But if I were to roll it around my mouth, maybe it doesn't hit all the same spots or the air. You know, when you take a, a breath in with the beer, you kind of get a little bit of a different flavor and it kind of, you know, aerates it a little bit. And that's where I'm getting, with a quick swig, I'm getting a real quick upfront pininess, then a, some sweetness and then pininess again. If I hold it in my mouth, I seem to get the pininess up front. The bitter kind of grapefruit citrusy taste and then more piney hoppiness. Not being a huge IPA fan in general, like I said, I'm kind of getting a newfound appreciation for it. This is actually, I like this. It's not a, it's, it's hoppy and piney, but it's not... Uh, you get that kind of uh, incentive with the sweetness a little bit to keep drinking more. I don't know how many of these I could drink. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, I think, believe I said 7.2%. Uh, I don't see it immediately here on the label, but I mean, that's, that's pretty strong. Let's see if I can see when this was bottled. 8-9, August 9th, and I'm recording this on the 12th, Saturday the 12th. So this is uh, three days Old. Yeah, like I said earlier. So, wow, this is, uh, looks like if this time code's correct, it was at 1.40 in the morning that this was bottled and I got it, I think that same day, that afternoon. And uh, yeah, wow, I got that super quick. And I'm going to take another drink of it because I'm kind of digging on this. It kind of almost has a, a bit of a kind of slurm lord quality to it. I reviewed Slurmlord earlier. You can find a link to my Slurmlord review right up over here. Um, except that was more fruity and more sweet. This is kind of hoppy, overpoweringly hoppy. Um, you get that little bit of sweetness. Like I said, that's kind of my incentive to drink more is that little kind of a taste of a sweetness. That's like the carrot on the stick for me. Um, if, if you know somebody that's not a huge IPA person and you bought a six pack of this and you want to kind of share it, maybe they're not the person that would appreciate it with you, but it is, it is very good, uh, for what it is, a triple hopped IPA. And, and from just that alone, you should expect that it's going to be, you know, you're going to get a lot of that piney bitterness. You're going to get that grapefruit kind of citrus bitterness. But again, if you kind of swig it, you can get that quick burst of uh, sweetness. And if you kind of roll it in your mouth a little bit, you get, uh, you still get the sweetness. It's just a little bit more subtle. The mouthfeel itself. Kind of um, pillowy, you know, soft mouthfeel. It's not, it's, it's crisp because of all that hoppy bitterness, but Overall, uh, getting back into IPAs, I, I could I could definitely appreciate this. This isn't one that it's like, oh, this is so bitter, I can't drink it. it like I would consider, from my memories of Hop Slam by Bell's, to be kind of like, oh, this is too too much bitter. But this is just bitter enough. Again, if you're if you're gonna drink this with somebody that's not a big IPA fan, doesn't really appreciate it, maybe you want to mix in a couple lighter IPAs for them. And this is something you probably want to work towards. So that right there, my friends, is Psychedelic Catgrass. On direction from Shorts, drink this as fresh as possible. So what do you all think about the Shorts buyout? Is it gonna influence your decision on buying their beer? Let me know in the comments below, right down here. And while you're down there, why not like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of these updates. You can also check out links to my social media like my Instagram and Facebook pages and a link to my blog at drafttherapy.com. As always, thanks for stopping by. Believe me, thanks for watching this far. I do appreciate it. And remember, drink craft beer. Support your local breweries until they totally sell out, if they ever do. <laughs> and until next time, treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.